Hi guys, it is a cool and cloudy, soon to be 44 degrees tonight, uh, here on Friday, September 11th, 2020. Here in Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York, September 11th. Doesn't that name mean something? Mm. Oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. And this is my little co-pilot. Sancho Panza, we have got to go help uh, Brother Basil get in his firewood for the upcoming winter. You know, I'm going to be heading to Florida. My, I'm flying south to Florida. But we're going to go help Brother Basil. I think we're doing three cords of firewood. Uh, but before I head out for that job, do what I do every Friday. We're going to go over to mongabay.com for our weekly laundry list of how this planet is going pretty much to hell in a handbasket at 67,000 miles an hour. And, uh, wow, is it already this late? So, so guys, I am not going to mention the C word in this. I, you know, I'm, I'm still getting smart ass comments. Got one today about how, you know, implying that the C word is nothing but good for this planet and for Rhett Butler or Sam Mitchell to cherry pick. I guess, I guess Rhett and I are cherry picking. But anyway, we're not going to talk about the C word today. So all of you clueless morons who think the C word is nothing but good for the planet can uh, can stay firm in that myth. Anyway, but we're going to start off with some good news. Finally, some good news uh, from the Lancet. Yes, the best news of. 2020, humanity may never hit the 10 billion mark. A new study in the Lancet finds our global population may never reach 10 billion. A population slowdown. A population slowdown will pose challenges, but it could also give us a better chance of avoiding ecological collapse. Population slowdown is not a reason for concern, but rather for celebration, which is exactly what it is. Now, you know, what they're talking about is the decrease in birth rates. Uh, you know, here in the U.S., the lowest birth rate in our country's history. Uh, you know, this is pretty much everywhere on the planet except for uh, sub-Saharan Africa, y you know, bucking the trend of the rest of the planet. You can do your own math for there. But, of course, anyone with a brain uh, reading the evidence on the wall knows that it is not going to be a decrease in birth rates that is going to keep this planet from hitting $10 billion, it is going to be an over-the-cliff uh, collapse in the human population. And the question is not whether we're going to reach $10 billion, is whether or not we're going to reach zero, which of course would be the best news on the planet for every single earthling we share the planet with. Uh, but anyway, it is good to know that uh, about the best news of 2020 is why the health of the Amazon River matters to us all. Like the rainforest, which takes its name, the Amazon is the largest and most biodiverse river on the planet. The river and its tributaries are a critical thoroughfare for an area the size of the continental United States and function as a key source of food and livelihoods for millions of people 
Yet, despite its vastness and importance, the mighty Amazon is looking increasingly vulnerable due to humans. Yes. Uh, in bid to protect a Philippine pangolin stronghold, little talk of enforcement. Yes. So this is, all right, we have a new 400,000 acre uh, piece of land in the Philippines, which they are thinking of, you know, drawing a, a little line around on a map. This is another 400,000 acres they, where they, they get out a map, they draw a line around it, and they paint it green for uh, any clueless moron to think because it is now a protected area that there's going to be anybody there to protect the pangolins or anybody else living there. Yes, uh, the area suffers from deforestation driven by illegal logging as well as massive poaching and illegal trade of its wildlife, including pangolins. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, critics of the, uh, of the plan say it will be a bureaucratic waste of resources without efforts to step up enforcement measures to curb the illegal trade of pangolins and other wildlife in the mountain range. Uh, <clears throat> the critically endangered Philippine pangolin is one of the most trafficked animals on earth with its population declining by up to 95 percent between 1980 and 2018. You know, to send them to China. It is the uh, the well the bush meat, but more that the BS uh, <clears throat> traditional medicine in China that is eradicating pangolins off the face of the earth. I've never been completely clear what these clueless morons over there in China think that a uh, pangolin scale tea or whatever they make out of this is going to do for them. Anyway, this whole ridiculous notion of uh, of protected areas. It, it, it's, it's become an absolute joke and I'm not going to get off on a C-word rant about how it's a bigger joke in 2020 than it has ever been in history. There are no protected areas pretty much on this planet. Maybe a few uh, left uh, in the U.S., Canada, and Europe. All right, what's going on with the giant armadillo, the world's largest armadillo? Take a wild guess uh, what's going on with the giant armadillo. It's the same thing going on with the damn pangolins. Uh, the species is now... I guess officially categorized as vulnerable with the advance of agribusiness and the attendant deforestation and road construction that comes with it uh, as the main threat to the giant armadillo and everything else. Okay, from giant armadillo to these liars over there in Indonesia, uh, you know, questioning the deforestation figures coming out of the Indonesian government. Uh, so, the Indone Indonesia just received this $104 million reward for avoiding 
deforestation and of course this hundred and four million dollar prize money or whatever it is uh, was based on the self-reporting of the Indonesian government about what a good job they're doing on fighting deforestation in Indonesia. And, uh, the, gee, uh, among the cont the <clears throat> the people handing out this money, whoever GCF is, have questioned the way the Indonesian government arrived at their figures. Yes. Uh, among the contentious points is a reference level that may be inflated, possible double counting, and persistent neglect of indigenous rights. Do you think so? Okay. They're asking a question. How do we avert global warming, extinctions, and pandemics. Uh, okay, there is one way and one way only to avert global warming, extinctions, and pandemics, and that is to get rid of the humans. But no, we have a new app. We have a new app. I guess to put on your smartphone to uh, it is your an app on your smartphone will avert global warming extinctions and pandemics. Yes, uh, somewhere down in this, uh, ultimately, fifty percent of the planet's land area will need to be protected from further degradation to keep the world under the one and a half degree C threshold and stave off ecological collapse. Uh, there, there is so much apocaloptimistic hopium uh, poured into that sentence and I guess a new cell phone app it is, is number one going to protect 50% uh, of this planet's uh, uh, this planet's land area. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we can see how much the uh, what is it? 15% of it's 15% of the planet's land area now has little lines on a on maps with little light green painted inside it. Well, okay, we're up to 15%. Once we get those little lines on these maps and shade them green, then we will save the planet with the help of your cell phone app. Uh, uh, of course, and, and then the absolute uh, hilarious notion that this is going to keep this planet under a one and a half degree sea rise in uh, mean temperature, the you know, Rhett Butler, come on, brother, uh, you don't believe one word of that. Oh, I forgot to take the little dog out to pee and poop, and now he's telling me, you need to take me out to pee and poop. Hurry up with this rant. Sorry, little dog. You will not believe this, guys, but mercury from gold mining contaminates Amazon communities staple fish. The four species of fish most commonly consumed by indigenous and riverine people in the Brazil in state of Amapá contain the highest concentrations of mercury. The mercury comes from gold mining activity where it's used to separate gold from ore before being burned off and washed into the rivers. Of course, you are not going to find anywhere in this article that it is the indigenous in the Amazon rainforest uh, making up a large percentage of the people doing this. Uh, as I discovered when I was down there with my own eyes in, in 2009.
uh, this is flat out unbelievable that it was the Indians inside the, this quote indigenous reserve inside their own protected area uh, running these gold mines. You, you, you know, it, 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 it's hopeless, people. Uh, it's absolutely hopeless. And nobody is talking about uh, the number of Amazon Indians engaged in the destruction of the Amazon rainforest because nobody wants to slay the noble savage myth. Anyway, I know I'm getting myself in trouble with the uh, snowflakes. Let me uh, move on. Uh, and guys, good lord, I, have, I need to be out of here in 20 minutes and I gotta take the little dog to pee and poop. Uh, so I'm just skipping over a lot of this. Okay, this is uh, <clears throat> Manga Bay's spin on, you know, this new, I, I, this a lot of my rant yesterday talking about this biannual report from the World Wildlife Fund. Uh, global wildlife is being decimated by human Actions. Hmm. Report warns. Do you think so? Between 1970 and 2016, wild populations of mammals, birds, amphibians, reptiles, and fish shrank by 68% on average. The most catastrophic declines documented from Latin America and the Caribbean. Uh, more than 80% of freshwater fish are collapsing, underlining the threat from ex excessive extraction of freshwater pollution and the destructive impacts of damming waterways. Yes. Here we go. The assessment aims to grab the attention of world leaders who will gather virtually for the UN General Assembly kicking off in four days. Yes. What is going on with BlackRock uh, <laughs> today? Take a wild guess what is going on in BlackRock. BlackRock silent on livestock in its latest global warming policy. Yes. In July, BlackRock, the world's largest investment fund manager, said it would take concrete action against at least 53 companies for their inaction regarding global warming and place 191 other companies under observation. But the announcement left out one of the major drivers of global warming, the meat industry, mainly the beef industry, which is the number one cause of deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. There you go. I cannot imagine why BlackRock uh, left out the beef industry. Uh, anyway, what is going on in the Indonesian coastal villages? Take a wild guess. In Indonesia's coastal villages, the plastic crisis is both homegrown and invasive. Would you believe that proper management of plastic waste is lacking in Indonesia's coastal communities where the use of plastics is outpacing mitigation efforts? Yes. So these researchers studied 6,700 households and found that the residents there had relatively low knowledge about plastic and how to manage it properly. Hmm, 
while their use of plastic, particularly single-use plastic packaging, is growing. Yes, uh-huh. The researchers have called for plastic producers to take greater responsibility for managing the waste generated by their products. Yes, Indonesia is the second biggest contributor of plastic waste in the world's oceans behind only China. Okay, now guys, this one will really get uh, the clueless morons in a tizzy. I, I've never really talked much here about the concept of regenerative ranching. Regenerative ranching, you can find all sorts. Uh, I'm sure you can Google it or YouTube search it or whatever about how this, uh, th this absolute greenwashing BS called green regenerative ranching uh, is supposed to make it sound like any sort of ranching beef cattle is sustainable on this planet. Well, Manga Bay has some bad news for you. No, regenerative ranching is not good for grassland birds. The benefits of regenerative plant agriculture are being co-opted by the ranching industry to inaccurately claim that ranching, meaning beef cattle ranching, is the best solution to protect wild birds. Actually, livestock grazing is one of the leading factors threatening and endangering populations of birds and other wildlife in the U.S. and globally from habitat loss and, de and degradation to water drainage and stream impacts, greenhouse gases, and the spread of invasive weeds. Yes, the best conservation principles will prioritize conserving nature and natural resources for wildlife over private industrial interest. Do you think so? How the, uh, 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 how the ranching industry is greenwashing uh, the, these clueless uh, who will not put down their hamburger. Anyway, I know it, little dog. Uh, you need to go pee. Uh, okay, let's just look at the entire planet from California to the Amazon to Siberia. Around the world, a fire crisis flares up, and it is fueled by humans. Hmm. An increase in fire alerts this year compared to last year could have dire consequences for health, biodiversity, and the economy, according to this new study. Uh, though some wildfires are triggered naturally, triggered naturally, like those lightning fires out there in California, humans are responsible for an estimated 75% of all wildfires. In the northern hemisphere, this, you know, meaning the start of these uh, fires is attributed to negligence, while in the tropics, fires are often set intentionally to clear land for agriculture. Yes, uh, do you think so? All right, we have a conversation with marine ecologist Erika Sala. All right, who has to say, tamper with nature and everyone suffers. 
Yes. Her new book, uh, The Nature of Nature, Why We Need the Wild, serves as a warning calling out the impacts we humans are having on the global ecosystem, as well as solutions, yes, such as protecting half of the earth for nature. I think we've been through this, so Erica just does not get it. If the problem is humans, there is one solution. All right, the little dog is about to pop, uh, so we'll just have to run through about how organized crime is taking over global fishing. Um, anyway, one more. $154 billion dollars and capital has gone to 300 forest risk companies since the Paris Agreement. A <clears throat> more than 50,000 financial deals were analyzed, showing that at least 154 billion dollars in loans and investment were provided to 300 companies in Southeast Asia, Brazil in West and Central Africa since 2016. Of the 15 banks, the largest overall loan portfolios in forest risk industries, eight of them are signatories to the UN's Principles for Responsible Banking, which calls for a halt to deforestation. Yes, the UN's Principles for responsible banking. Thank you for uh, that. There's a good a place as any. You always want to uh, end with a a uh, a knee slapper. Uh, anyway, uh, I've got to wrap this up. Uh, if you enjoyed what Rhett had to share with you, give him, show him some love, and give him a thumbs up to this video, and do subscribe while you're over here. And so guys, I'm going to be heading off on Sunday and will be gone till next Friday. Not sure I will have another chronicle of the collapse before I go, but if you don't hear from me, I will be back next Friday with the next load of doom and gloom from Manga Bay. But right now it is time to chop wood here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, and I suggest you get out there and chop some wood while you still can. Bye, guys. Okay, little dog, I get it. You need to go pee. Hold on.